This is not a dog. You heard me right. Blue from Blue's Clues is not a dog. Sure, she looks like a dog and she barks like a dog, but she is not a dog. Get this. Blue is in fact an advanced member of an alien species looking to learn from humans in an eventual bid to take over planet Earth. An alien species that is getting closer to achieving that goal season by season. And here's the craziest part. This is barely a theory. As you're about to see, practically all of this is explicitly spelled out in the show's canon. So sit down in your thinking chair and think, think, think about your impending servitude to an army of canine themed overlords. That's alien for sit and obey. Hello internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that's really found its niche talking about the dark lore of children's programming starring puppies. It is a very specific content category, but we are dialed into it. For those of you who have no idea what's going on, today we're talking about Blue's Clues, the iconic Nickelodeon kids show that ran for 10 years between 1996 and 2006 before getting revived in 2019. Every episode was an interactive audience adventure, as the animated dog Blue and her human companion roamed around their storybook house in order to find three clues that would help him solve the episode's big mystery. Honestly, when you look at it, this thing was like the training ground for theorists of the future. Blue's clues walked so film theory could run. Along the way, they'd sing songs, read the mail, and do stuff like this. You need our handy dandy? Notebook! Notebook, right? You know, the good sort of formulaic that any kid's show really thrives off of. The show was hosted by Steve for four seasons, who then went off to college and passed the baton over to his younger brother, Joe. Now, in its current iteration, Blue's Clues and You, it's hosted by their cousin, Josh, all wearing primary colors, all equally oblivious to the obvious answers that are lying right in front of their faces. Does she need to put the bubbles between the towel and the soap? And, and make a bubble sandwich. Sure, Steve. Sure, your dog Blue wants to eat a bubble sandwich. Try it. See how much dog vomit you're cleaning up out of that carpet. Anyway, Blue's Clues is probably, in my opinion, one of the best kids' programs of all time. If you've never seen it, who taught you how to feel? I guess I just wanted to say that after all these years, I never forgot you. Ever. And I'm super glad we're still friends. Me too, Steve. I didn't forget you either. Who is cutting onions in here? <clears throat> anyway, now that my family's exhausted the entire canon of Paw Patrol and is currently waiting patiently for the new movie to release later this year, we've moved on to revisiting some classic blues clues in order to fill the void in our Friday night movie nights. And let me tell ya, as I've gone back to this show as an adult, I'm picking up on a lot of small, strange details here and there. Things that seriously make me use my mind and take a step at a time. And I gotta tell you, it's time to do the thing that I wanna do, which is expose blues clues for the alien conspiracy that it is. You see, the colorful storybook world of Blue's Clues holds a secret in its later seasons and spin-off movies. A secret that recontextualizes the entirety of the show. For decades, we've been led to believe that Blue is a puppy. Nope, she is anything but. She is an emissary from the stars scouting out us Earthlings. And our reckoning is coming, friends. So skidoo on over, because it's A clue! Oh, what did you say? You have the flu? Sorry to hear that. I've been sick too lately. You can probably hear in my voice. It's been a really nasty winter so far. N no, a clue. Oh, you see a clue. Thanks, Slippery. The first clue is the subscribe button. Let's put that in our handy dandy notebook! Wacom tablet. Right. So we draw one long line at the top, a long line at the bottom, connect the two with some rounded lines at the ends, and then we write the word subscribed in the middle. Wait, does yours not look like that? You better fix that, otherwise Mailbox is gonna cry. And you don't want to make Mailbox cry, do you? Let's begin in a simple place, shall we? Blue's age. The sheer fact that Blue is still alive in the new reboot series automatically throws her dogness into question, considering that she should 100% be dead at this point. You see, in the world of the show, there is clearly a passage of time that's established. For the most obvious example of this, in season four, Steve goes off to college. There, done. Time is not a frozen entity inside this universe. Season five, episode 29, tells us the story of how Steve first met Blue. At the time, she was a young puppy and Steve looked to be about eight years old, which tells us that they were together for at least 10 years before Joe entered the picture. Now in season 2 episode 9 Blue's birthday, Blue's cake has 8 candles in it. And we're not talking dog years either. I think we've all heard the general rule of thumb that one year for a dog equals about 7 years of human life. So if your dog is 2 real years old, its dog age would be about like 14, right? Well it turns out the math isn't exactly that simple. Dogs mature more quickly than we do early on in their life. Size and breed also play a factor with smaller dogs tending to
to live longer than larger ones. So knowing that, what would Blue's age expectancy be? Well, based on her large floppy ears, she's likely one of the breeds from the Hound family. We also know that Blue talks a lot in yowling barks and high-pitched whines. <coughs> This also fits with the hound group, as dogs bred for hunting have a very similar distinctive sound and tend to be more talkative than other dogs because they had to communicate with their humans while on the chase. But the thing that actually clinches it is her weight. We know, based on Blue's visit to the vet in Season 5, Episode 30, that she weighs in at 20 pounds, which would put her as one of the smaller hounds. In other words, Blue most closely resembles a beagle, giving her a rough life expectancy of 15 years. At absolute best, the record for the oldest dog in history is 22 years, and I doubt that they were as sprightly as our puppy Blue here. So, if Blue was 8 at the top of Season 2, and now, 23 years later, we have this new reboot, there is no way that she would still be qualifying for puppy status, let alone living status if she were actually a dog. What's that? Maybe time froze between the season breaks? I mean, you would think that, but no. Time continued to march forward for all of the characters. Case in point, Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper. In the Season 1 finale of Blue's Clues, the big mystery solve is that these two seasonings are having themselves a baby named Paprika. It is really cute. By the fourth season, Paprika has become a toddler. Two years have passed in two seasons. In season four, the family has themselves another child, Cinnamon. By the series wrap, Cinnamon is still a baby that can barely talk. But hold on. In this new reboot series, Blue's Clues and You, everyone is older. Paprika is a teenager with a smartphone, and Cinnamon is probably around 10, wearing a cool sideways ball cap. The full 21-year gap between the original original series finale and the reboot hasn't passed, but it has been at least a decade for the characters inside of this world, meaning that Blue is likely 21 years old or older. That is not a dog who is able to dance, party, and freeze on a single toe. And the lies and the deceit about Blue's age don't stop there. If you jump to the reboot and watch season 1 episode 11, Happy Birthday Blue, count the candles on the cake. Not only has she not aged, apparently she's aged backwards. Her cake only has five candles three less than what she had when it was her birthday with Steve. The evidence here just doesn't add up. And before you think that maybe this is a new replacement dog, it's not. It is confirmed to be the same Blue from the old series by both Steve and Joe. Steve! Joe! I don't know what Blue wants with her snack. Let, Let us, us talk, talk to her. her. Hey, Blue. Talk to me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Got it. We talked it over. And there's really only one thing to do. Play, Play Blue's, Blue's Clues. Clues! So, if it's the same dog 20 plus years later, how can Blue still be alive and kicking? The only reasonable explanation is that Blue isn't a dog at all. But to prove that, we gotta find ourselves some more clues. A clue! A clue! Tattoo? Tattoo? Yeah, I, I got one on the small of my back. It's a cute little butterfly. Why do you ask? No, Matt. A clue! Oh, a clue. And it's on Blue's paw print. Isn't that meta? So why would Blue's paw print be a clue? Well, it's because her anatomy isn't like a dog. For starters, she's able to pick up books with an opposable thumb. You don't have to be a vet or have a master's in animal sciences to know that dogs do not have thumbs. And yet, on many occasions throughout the show and the promotional artwork, we see Blue holding things, rowing rafts, holding a piping bag, or a guitar, all with a big ol' prominent thumb. A thumb that is somehow able to retract back into her hand. Uh, sorry, let me rephrase this. Blue's whole paw is able to morph and change. Blue normally has herself three obvious toes as she hops around the house. This is consistent to her design across all iterations of the show. And yet, when she goes up to smash a paw print on the screen for a clue or during the intro sequence, she grows a fourth toe. And also, again, there's that humanoid monkey thumb that's hidden somewhere in there too. This is not normal dog anatomy. Why has this not raised anyone's alarms before? And the non-dog behavior doesn't stop there either. In season six, episode eight, soccer practice, Blue and the gang play a game of soccer. After they're done, they all sit down to share some chocolate ice cream. Yep, you heard that one right. Chocolate Chocolate ice cream. I think most people know that giving a dog chocolate is basically like giving them poison. But ice cream is just as bad for the dog. It can lead to bloating and vomiting. But here at the end of the episode, both Blue and her friend Magenta are eating chocolate ice cream. Clearly, there are two imposters among us. And right now, Blue and Magenta be looking mad sus. Whatever she's doing, she is clearly not a dog. How then can I prove that she's from another planet? Well, just by watching the show. In season six, episode one, The Legend of the Blue Puppy, Joe and the gang are watching a blue moon. All of a sudden, Moona the Moon Fairy appears. I came here all the way. 
from the blue moon to tell Blue about her legend. As the story goes, on the night of the very first blue moon, a whole litter of puppies just appeared out of nowhere. But one was different from all the others. She was blue. Her color wasn't the only thing different about this puppy. This puppy liked to read and listen to music. That is not a dog. That is an alien trying to look like a dog and failing miserably. It's also at this point that I should probably mention Blue's other origin story. In season 5's holiday episode, we find out that Blue, again, is no normal dog. Instead, she appeared out of a storybook just because Steve wished her into reality. Steve did not have his present yet, but he knew exactly what he wanted. I hope I get a puppy. Steve gets this mysterious book in the mail from an unmarked package about a blue dog who doesn't do normal dog things. While the other puppies ate their food from a bowl on the floor, Blue sat at the table and ate with a fork and a spoon. We're told that Blue wants a friend who can teach her all the songs and stories and games. The book then ends with the most abrupt fourth wall break imaginable. And then Blue looked up. She had an idea. Could her friend be you? That night, Blue jumps out of the book using the magical power of skidooing, and the rest is history. Now, it would seem like the Blue Moon and book stories would contradict, but they don't. In fact, they just repeat each other. They're just the same story being told differently. Blue is a creature that came into being because of the Blue Moon and was immediately different from normal dogs. That much is very clear. And it would seem that one power that the Moon puppies possess is the power to skidoo, hopping into fictional worlds like books and paintings. This is a skill that seems specific to Moon puppies like Blue, who are then able to pass along those abilities to their caretakers who get exposed to her. Notice how shocked everyone is the first time that she skidoos into a world, but eventually they're all doing it. Whoa, did you see that? Blue just went right into the picture of that farm. That's so cool. I think Blue wants us to follow her. Whoa, she's in the picture with all the shapes. Yeah, Blue just skidooed. Blue skidoo, we can do. This is my first skidoo. You ready? Blue skidoo, we can too. Anyway, Blue wound up inside of a book waiting for the right human caretaker who would then be able to teach her human ways. But skidooing isn't her only magic power. Returning back to the Moon Fairies and the Legend of the Blue Puppy episode, we see that Blue has an even greater ability. She was the smartest puppy in all the land. And the legend says that there is something else that made the blue puppy special. Spoiler alert, it's not what you expect. She was born with a little golden key. But she didn't know why she had it or what the key might unlock. Yep, a mysterious key. Late season Blue's Clues gets to some weird places, man. The TLDW of all this is that Blue is finally old enough to unlock her secret ability. The key, which has been hidden inside her alien dog stuffed animal the whole time, hint hint, opens Blue's magical playroom. Blue transforms into a giant puppet and she can talk. The greatest thing about your playroom is that here you can talk to your friends. Uh, I can talk to you? <gasps> Blue can talk. Wow. That is your greatest gift. No, no, no thank you. I'll just go back to the barking, please. What's also interesting is that time moves differently inside a Blue's room. We can actually see from the clock in the background that each toy box segment here doesn't run as the same time outside of the toy box. The whole thing functions a lot like the hyperbolic time chamber from Dragon Ball Z, where decades of training can get done inside the room in mere minutes of real time. So, is this a similar sort of facility? Is Blue's room a place for Blue to hone her power of human speech. Seems like the next clear evolution for Blue species. So if Blue were to harness her true alien powers within Blue's room, what would the fully evolved form of Blue species look like? Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Rainbow Puppy, the newest addition to the roster added as a part of the reboot. Rather than just being one color, Rainbow Puppy is, as you might have guessed, a rainbow, RGB gamer for life. More importantly though, she can speak fluent English and walks on two feet rather than four like Blue and Magenta. Not only does this make Rainbow puppy less dog-like, she's clearly a more powerful version of Blue. In Season 3, Episode 11 of the reboot, Rainbow Puppy's Skidoo Adventure, we see that she can skidoo way more than Blue ever could. In most episodes, Blue only manages to skidoo like once, maybe twice, but in this episode, Rainbow Puppy skidoos into Chalk World, the post office, the farm, the ocean, the theater, Rainbow World, and finally Skidoo World. Seven times in a single episode. She is clearly far stronger than Blue or Magenta ever were, and on top of that, she doesn't have an owner. Blue and Magenta both have owners, but I'm guessing
something Rainbow Puppy doesn't because of her abilities. She doesn't need a caretaker like the others because she's a fully evolved version of whatever alien species these creatures are meant to be. Will the same happen to Blue? Will she soon have enough power of her own that she no longer requires an owner? Absolutely. You can actually see the start of it once Blue unlocks her room. Joe, her caretaker at the time, is completely sidelined. He doesn't know where Blue's disappeared off to. Heck, he doesn't even learn about Blue's room until we tell him. There you are, Blue. So, did you find it? Did you find your greatest gift? So? What is it? Oh. That is so cool. He's clearly left on the outs. You, know, you two are lucky to have each other. You and Blue. Blue and you. Great friends. With Steve, it was always about his relationship with Blue. But once Blue unlocks her final ability, Joe serves no purpose. He's not needed anymore. It's all about you, the viewer, the one who's allowed inside of Blue's room. In fact, Blue is so not interested in Joe anymore that she doesn't even play Blue's Clues with him. Joe has to be the one to create the game himself. You know, I hope you liked finding Joe's Clues, because I sure liked leaving him. Maybe we'll play again sometime soon. We would not. Joe is an afterthought. The humans have served their purpose. We even catch glimpses of Blue standing on two feet in the recently released movie. She's starting to evolve into a higher powered being. She's starting to approach the levels of Rainbow Puppy. In this new Blue's Clues movie, we see Blue's powers to an extreme degree. She's able to skidoo a whole bus through a billboard to get to New York City. And while they're in New York, everyday items like a mailbox, mustard, and salt and pepper shakers come to life as Blue walks past. Blue has the ability to create living beings. So we've established that Blue is clearly not a dog from Earth, but what's the goal here? Well, after sitting down in my thinking chair to think, 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 I realize Blue's true purpose. She's training up to become the next Rainbow Dog. And so what's Rainbow Dog's deal? Domination. In Rainbow Puppy's Skidoo Adventure, we see Skidoo World for the first time ever, the world that Josh and Blue travel between when they Skidoo. In this world, I noticed a few interesting things. One, it's rainbow colored, showing Rainbow's control over this meta space. But secondly, we see lots of pictures throughout Skidoo World. And these aren't random photos either. They all represent different Skidoo locations throughout the series. The planet picture represents season two, episode four, what experiment does Blue want to try where they skidoo into space? A jungle is season two, episode four of the reboot, Blue's Big Baking Show, where they skidoo into a jungle. And the gingerbread house is from season two, episode six of the reboot, Blue's Night Before Christmas, where they skidoo to the North Pole. These aren't just random places. This world holds all the places that Josh and Blue have been traveling to, and it holds the magic that makes everything come alive. This isn't just a portal, it's a hub world. When any of the puppies skidoo, the power to go there again is stored here in this skidoo world. They're capturing different locations across the world, allowing them to have simultaneous control over everything. Blue and Rainbow Puppy may seem friendly, but believe me when I say anyone that claims to be a dog but can walk, eat chocolate, and have opposable thumbs is someone that cannot be trusted. Get as far away as you can from Blue and her friends because she could be skidooing to a place near you and never, ever go into Blue's room alone. They're all just using you. Instead, you should probably just say, so long, there's no time for one more song. If you manage to do that, my friends, I gotta thank you for doing your parts. You guys sure are smart. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory.